Greetings hobbies, this is Arsene Zavall, and in this video we're going to have a look at how to make different icons, and importantly how to make sure that they are 3D printable. So in the last tutorial we were having a look at how to make this ammo crate, and we looked at how to make it from a cube all the way to the point it's one single manifold object that can be 3D printed. Now if you haven't checked out that video, there's a link in the top right hand corner in the description, but off the back of that, Matt and Wayoon asked me how they would add icons to this, and importantly, how to make sure they're 3D printable. So we're going to cover that in this tutorial, and I'm going to divide this up into two parts, so feel free to use the chapters to skip to the bit that you want. So we're going to start with making an icon. And the first thing to do is find a suitable icon. And coming online and doing a quick search for Eagle logos, I came up with this page, which is Adobe Stock, and you can get a free trial to download these if you choose to. And this is with a standard license, which means that you can reproduce it for your own personal use, but you can't sell it. So let's bring that in and then we can look at how to duplicate it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we are in front view or the view that we want our icon to be in. And then I'm gonna press Shift and A and I'm going to bring in an image as a reference. And then I'm just gonna to go to where we've got our picture and you'll notice I've already cropped this just so it's down to the image that I'm interested in. And then if we press Shift and Z, we can see that that is there in the background and I can click S to scale up to an appropriate size. Let's say something about there. Now do notice that this hasn't come in perfectly centered because it's cropped in a slightly different way. So what I am gonna do is just press G and then move it so that the center of this tail part is in the center of my object. So it's perfectly in the middle. And then let's get duplicating this. So what we need to do is we need to turn this into a solid object so we can then add it to our crate. So we now just want an object or a vertex to use to start making this object. So there's two ways of doing that. The first is pressing Shift and A and then bringing in something like a plane. I mean, it can be whatever, okay? And then go to vertex mode and then all you need to do is press M and at center and we've now got a single vertex there. The other option, if I just delete that, is if you've got extra objects enabled, which you can do really easily, just go to Edit, Preferences. This is all native to Blender, Add-on, and type in object and make sure your add mesh extra objects is ticked. What you can do then is just press shift and A mesh and you'll have this object for a single vert. So add a single vert. And then I'm just gonna G and Z that down so that is at this point of the tail. Then we need to go into vertex mode and we need to start tracing out this shape. So there's two ways of doing this. One, you can just press E while selecting the vertex and that's gonna allow you to just drag it to the next point. I actually find it a little bit quicker to just hold down the control key and then you can right click and that is right click not left click and it will make a new vertex at the point that you've clicked and it's added onto the last vertex that you were selecting. So I just find this a little bit quicker to just go around and trace out this object. And then we need to join this all together. So I'm just gonna press A and then F and that's gonna fill this so that it's one face. Now I've only done half of this just to speed everything up. I'll talk about what I'm gonna do with that in a second. So then we want to copy these bits of the wing and instead of just doing these all as separate objects, I'm gonna deal with that later because I think it'll be a bit quicker. So I'm just gonna select one vertex, Shift and D to move it over and then just exactly the same thing. So control clicks on each of the major corners and then to make sure all of these are selected, I'm just gonna press L which selects all of the linked objects and then F we've done the same thing and then just do that for the others you'll notice that i'm doing this two at a time that's not because i'm being lazy that is just because i don't think these small gaps would show up very well when 3d printing and bear in mind this is going to be a fairly small object it works quite well and then all i'm going to do is shift and d because these last ones are basically the same and then shift and d and we've got that nicely done as I said, I've only done half of this and that's just to make everything a little bit quicker. So all I'm gonna do is go to add modifier and I want to use a mirror modifier. I don't want it on the X axis. We've got this going across the Y axis. So I want to select the Y axis and I want it bisected and I don't want clipping on. Now this is gonna cause a bit of a problem here, but all I'm gonna do is just grab those and then G and move them across. Oh look, we've got like a double headed eagle. That looks quite cool. I'll just fiddle around with these just to get everything looking a little bit better. All right, and then Shift and Z out of X-ray mode, and then I'm gonna G and X to bring that in front of my object so it's easier to look at and work with. 
Now we do have some slight odd shading here. I do think that we're gonna have an issue with this. So I'm gonna just quickly come in and check face orientation. And yep, we've got one face in the wrong way. So all I'm gonna do is go into face mode, select that face. Notice we've still got the mirror modifier on. And I'm just gonna to go to mesh, normals, and I want to flip those normals. Now we've got everything looking right. So back into object mode, and let's get making this into a solid icon. So the first thing I'm gonna do is apply the mirror modifier so we've got access to all the geometry. And then I'm gonna go into face mode, A to select all the faces, and I'm just gonna press E to extrude that out however far I want. Let's go with one millimeter. So I've just typed in one and hit enter. Now at this point we can, because these aren't overlapping, just go to object mode, G and X, make sure that goes slightly into our object and we could Boolean this onto our design and we've got that sorted. But this is gonna cause a problem for 3D printing. Well, actually at the moment, it's not gonna cause a huge problem. Just like this, it'd be fine because I've got my icon here and all I could do is just rotate this on the Y axis, something like that, and this would print fine because we've got no points directly facing the printer bed. However, if I intend on copying this across, so that was just using hard ops, you could do that with the mirror modifier as well, Whichever way we go now, oh, and let's just H to hide that reference image. Whichever way I go now, if I R and Y, while this one would be fine to print, this one would now be having problems. So we've definitely got some printing issues, or we just have to put lots and lots of supports on each of this point there, there, maybe all along that edge and so on. So this is far from ideal. So how can we deal with that? Well, there are a number of ways you can deal with this. It's entirely up to you. So the first way we could see all this 3D printing issue is make some sort of panel that's gonna be separate to print this on. So if I just go into face mode, select those two faces, shift and D to duplicate that, escape so they go in the same place, P and by selection, and then we've got this object here and that object separated. You'll notice that it's still got the original faces, so we haven't caused a problem. If you've got machine tools, you could have just pressed four, go into face mode, select those, E to extrude them out a little bit, and then S to scale, shift and X so it doesn't get any smaller on the X axis, and we could do something like that, and then maybe G and Z move our logo down to fit. So we could do something like that, and then effectively these two would get merged together. I would need to make sure, in fact, G and X, that'd be a little further back. And then we can print this and we can make sure that each copy is something like that so that we don't have any islands or points facing down and then we could glue them on each side. So that would be nice and easy as an option, but I don't quite like this option for this. We spent quite a lot of time making sure we've got these really nice angles and this ruins that. And while we could do that, so we could come in here and let's say those two faces and scale them up it's still not gonna look quite as smooth. And wherever we glue this on, so for example, along this edge here, there's gonna be a harsh line. So that is one option, but in this instance, I'd probably say that's not the correct choice. So let's just get rid of that. Now the other option will work and it will create one object, but it's gonna be a bit more work. However, I do think it is probably the right option in this instance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the object, go into vertex mode, press A to select all, P, and then I'm gonna separate by loose parts. And what that means is we've now got each of these as an individual part, and I'm actually gonna delete those just cause we can do it on one side and then mirror it over. So what we need to do first with this is get the origin centered on each of the individual objects. You'll notice because this was one original object, all of the origins are in the same point. So just down there, we don't want that. So I'm just gonna select all of them, shift and S if you've got machine tools and move the object origin to the geometry. If you don't have machine tools, you can just go to object, set origin and origin to geometry and that will do the same. Then we're going to, again with all of these selected, go into face mode, and this is just because it's quicker, and we're just gonna select all of the back faces. So all of those there. And then importantly, I'm gonna come up here and change this to make sure that we're going to be scaling by the individual origins. And then all I need to do is come to front view so I can check that it's what I want, press S, and I can make these bigger. Now, this hasn't worked perfectly just because we did this by eye, so we can just move some of these objects around slightly to just make sure they're a little bit more lined up. Okay, or that each one goes underneath 
the one before. So we can do something like that. So that all of the points have a little bit of overlap. Now, the way this is gonna work, because we're gonna have to modify this a little bit further, but I want to explain how this is working. If I just select everything and I go out of individual origins because it will rotate them on the individual origin as well and go to, let's say, the median point and rotate this on the y-axis. Now, as long as these edges here that I've created aren't parallel to where the build plate is going to be. So we'll imagine the build plate is going to be down here. If we have a look at this, these lines here are not parallel to any of these lines that would be the build plate or parallel to the build plate. I would have to go to something like that before we'd have a problem printing. So that allows me to go for a good sort of 30, 40 degrees before we're gonna have any printing errors. And actually, I wouldn't even need to put supports on these points. Now that can just be determined by how much these bits are sticking out. So you can actually make this less than this or more if you wanted to, but we do need to make sure that these other points are doing the same. So if I go into vertex mode for all of them, what I need to do is make sure that the bottom of each of these wings, G and Z, has a similar sort of angle to it. So I can do something like that. Now, realistically, that's probably the most important for the bottom one, but it's good to be sort of consistent with this. And then because this now looks a little bit off, I can just G and Y and bring that back in line to where I wanted it to be. Now we then need to go through the object and have a look at other problem areas. For example, this beak, that hasn't scaled in the same way. So if I just select all of those points there and then G and Z, we can bring that down and then we're not gonna have that problem. In fact, I may, for that back point there, move that around as well. In fact, I can probably GG and move that across, something like that. And because I've got auto merge on, that's gonna to merge together. So I probably should do the same for the back of the head as well. So let's just grab those, G and Z to bring those down. And let's have a look, maybe a little bit further, something like that. And again, you just wanna check that all your vertices are looking good. So I'm just gonna GG and bring that towards that one. So that is gonna make this much more 3D printable. You're now not gonna have that issue where you're gonna need additional supports. Now, it's up to you whether you like this. I actually quite like the look of this, and I think it matches well with the overall aesthetic of this object. I'm just gonna mirror those across using hard ops, or you could have used a mirror modifier. So we can just merge these together, and then we can print this out. Now, it might be at this point that you decide some of these gaps aren't big enough, so you could just G and Y and bring those a little bit further apart so that there's going to be a bit more of a gap to show up when you're 3D printing it. That's entirely up to you. So you'll need to determine that by the quality of your 3D printer. And I would say there's probably a little bit of tinkering here. For example, I could G and move that somewhere about there to more match the angle of what is in the object above and then similarly move that out. So it's just a little bit of tinkering to make sure you're happy with it, but this will give you a much more reliable 3D printing result. So hopefully that's answered Matt and Wayne's questions on the two techniques there of creating an icon and then making it a bit more 3D printer friendly. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate you giving it a like. And if you aren't subscribed, do subscribe to the channel for more great content. Have a great day, guys.